Well, wildfires are the scary fires. They're the dangerous fires, the ones we see almost daily in the news throughout most of the summer in the U.S. Wildfire actually has a little bit of a complicated definition. The definition of wildfire is an unplanned wildland fire, including those caused by lightning or unauthorized human causes, escaped prescribed fires, or any wildland fire where management requires fire containment. So these are the fires that people are hoping to put out because they're dangerous. But not all fires are bad fires, so wildfire refers again to the dangerous fires, but some fires are good fires. Um, and in general, um, fire has a lot of good uses, such as agricultural burning. An example of a wildland fire that might have a good use is I used to live in the Flint Hills of Kansas and every spring ranchers would work together to set fires and burn their pastures to create better quality forage for their cattle. So this is an agricultural use of burning that helps people produce food. How do wildfires spread? <laughs> So yes, how do wildfires spread? There's some general limitations to wildfires, including fuel. So this would be the material that the fire is using um, to, to burn. Whenever there's a continuous fuel source, then a wildfire can spread through that fuel source. Another really important factor for wildfire spread is wind. So a lot of the fires that we've seen um, out west become very dangerous very quickly. And so for the most part, we have a set of computational models that are quite good at predicting fire spread, but we're starting to see some new phenomena in fire behaviors, such as fire tornadoes and fires that create their own weather and interactions with the atmosphere that are really unstable. And so that's really important to try to understand as we move ahead, thinking about what is different now that we don't know about, that we might need to study to understand fire spread in better situations. How do you study wildfires? <laughs> well, there are, there's a lot of things to study about wildfires. It's a very integrative topic. It requires more than one discipline to really understand what's going on. So it requires understanding the natural environment, um, the built environment, the social systems that are interacting with wildfires. So it's really complicated actually. Um, but some of the most exciting things in wildland fire science are the new tools that researchers are beginning to bring to study wildland fires. So these include, in addition to traditional on the ground methods that we've been using for many decades to study wildland fire, we increasingly have tools like satellites, uh, airplanes, sensors on UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles. These are helping researchers see wildland fires at the spatial scales that they need to. To see back in time to understand if fire regimes are changing, researchers can use charcoal records preserved in the sediment or tree rings um, to kind of get a longer time sense for fires. There's a set of innovative long-term experiments that people have set up in different places all over the world that um, show what the effects of burning frequency changes are. The National Science Foundation has funded several innovative field campaigns that look at the smoke plumes produced by Western US wildfires. So these have uh, planes flying through the smoke plumes, measuring the chemistry of the smoke and all sorts of things about smoke dynamics, which are really important. That's a lot of different ways that people study fire, but it's kind of important to bring all these perspectives to understand the full picture. And in fact, the amount of data that's available now on wildfires is pretty overwhelming. That's great. Oh, I got so excited about data, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
You mentioned that the space station has a LIDAR system. Can you explain? Yeah, so there, so one of the most important tools for understanding wildland fire is understanding the structure of the fuel that is available to be burned. And there are several different ways to understand that, but one of the best ways is through LIDAR, which is um, a system that uh, provides a three-dimensional look at ecosystem structure. And those can be at different spatial scales. They can be mounted on unmanned aerial vehicles. They can be mounted on airplanes. The hope is that uh, we can connect these spatial scales all the way up to the International Space Station, which has a special LIDAR instrument on it called JEDI. That's no moon. It's a space station. And so that is providing a global view of ecosystem structure and fuel conditions that are important for wildfires. What topics interest you when you're thinking about how to prevent wildfire? Well, wildfire prevention is almost impossible. There's always going to be conditions where you have the right fuel source, you have an ignition, you have wind conditions that are just impossible to truly prevent a wildfire from occurring. I think the real trick and the real hope of a lot of research happening right now is to try to figure out how to be smarter about living with wildfire. So this is involving things about how do you build buildings? How do you plan communities? How do you get information to people to make evacuation decisions? What goes into them making an evacuation decision? And that involves not just the biophysical sciences and the engineering solutions that we might be able to come up with, those are very important, but it also involves the social science and thinking through the economics and the behaviors and the social conditions, the cultural situations that are gonna be really, really important as we move ahead for thinking about how to live more sustainably with wildfires. What other issues can wildfires cause? So wildfires cause so many issues um, for human societies. The absolute worst consequences of wildfires, of course, are loss of human life, um, which is truly uh, tragic. And after that, loss of property, which is also a really, really negative consequence of wildfires. But additional issues that wildfires can cause include uh, smoke, smoke pollution, smoke contamination, including thousands of miles away from the source of the fires. These can be really um, hazardous air quality conditions for people living in fire prone areas. And there's a whole set of post-fire hazards that happen, including landslides, so mudslides, unstable surfaces after a fire are very prone, and also drinking water contamination. We've seen several examples in the Western US where after a fire, in addition to the um, property destruction that communities are dealing with, they're also trying to find just safe sources of drinking water. So there's a lot of issues um, that wildfires can cause afterwards as well. So some pressing questions about wildfires are how are the above ground and below ground components of wildfires related? So everyone can kind of picture the above ground part of a wildfire where there's you know flames burning through uh, vegetation or burning through a forest, but there's really some important below ground components too. So these include not only the roots and uh, leaf litter and flammable material on the ground, but also some of the soil microbes and soil uh, creatures and other parts of the, the soil that are involved in uh, the wildfire. So those are harder to see, those are harder to measure, but they're increasingly important for recovery of areas after a wildfire. And so understanding how wildfire interacts with those below ground components is gonna be really important for figuring out how systems are recovering after wildland fire. So how can most wildfires conditions lead to mudslides? So mudslides are caused by several things. And one of those is steep slopes, which that's just not influenced by wildfire, but there's many steep hill slopes that are also fire prone. 
But one important thing that wildfires do that promotes mudslides is it removes that stabilizing vegetation cover. So any plants growing in a steep hill slope, that hill slope is partially being stabilized by the roots and the vegetation on the hill. And when those, those stabilizing forces are removed by a wildland fire and exposed to um, rain or other um, conditions, that promote uh, downslope movement, you can get some very severe mudslides. And we've seen several situations of post-fire mudslides uh, in California and on other steep hill slope places. Oh yes, oh my God, you like read my papers? So That's like all we ever want, you know? Yeah. <laughs>